so I'm uh, Chris Corrigan. Uh, I'm a lecturer in the School of uh, Arts, English and Languages. Uh, my main area of teaching and research is uh, in the area of audio recording, particularly recording of musical um, performances, musical ensembles. Um, I'm uh, a musician and composer myself, but uh, primarily by practice uh, an audio engineer um, recording primarily acoustic musical um, forces um, and specialising in contemporary music performance. The skills that you acquire, whether consciously or unconsciously, are skills that are, are being developed uh, on a daily basis and over, over your lifetime as a professional um, uh, audio engineer. So it's not something that you can um, acquire and then put to bed. It's, it's something that you're constantly developing. I've, I've been working in, in, uh, as an audio engineer myself for, for 20 years. You know, I'm still, still um, refining my ability to, um, to assess um, the sound properties of a, of a recording or to, to go into a new musical venue and to listen to a performance in the space and to assess how I'm going to go about the recording of this particular environment. So um, um, I guess I guess from that, that point of view, um, there were certain things about the undergraduate experience that we didn't feel were, were practical to implement um, in the context of the MOOC, but other things, um, specifically the, 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 the starting of a process of being aware of what to listen for and how to listen for it. Um, uh, that was really um, uh, something we felt could fit the, the model of uh, the MOOC delivery and would be something that was beneficial um, for um, a, a wide range of uh, uh, practitioners and, and participants. It's intended to be um, a, a short introduction, a six week um, introductory course to um, the, I suppose, the process or the skill and technique of listening to audio materials critically in a studio environment. It's something that could have application to professionals and um, uh, studio professionals working in recording and mixing and broadcast. Um, but equally, um, we try to design it um, as something that might appeal to musicians um, who are engaging with these kinds of technologies that are becoming uh, more democratically available uh, through, through software. So there's roughly four to five different uh, categories, if you like, of signal processing that we look at. And each week uh, along the way, um, we're looking at uh, the principles, we're looking at the theory, but we're also focusing primarily on how do you identify these kinds of changes, how do you identify these kinds of properties of sound. And um, we end each week with um, a series of practice listening um, uh, exercises um, that is followed by a, a formal assessment um, that students can take whenever they feel prepared um, to take. And the practice um, listening exercises are structured incrementally, so you can uh, come in um, usually at the first bank. Um, so week one will have, um, I think, two to three banks of exercises. You can start with um, uh, bank one, which will look at properties of sound. Um, week one focuses on the property of sound um, uh, frequency. Um, and there's a series of examples, um, a series of um, audio um, practice um, assessments um, that uh, the, uh, the learner can go through. Um, at a relatively coarse level for identifying um, uh, the frequency of a sound source. Uh, and then once um, the learner is comfortable with um, uh, the responses that they're getting on a regular basis through the first uh, practice exercise, they can move on to the second practice exercise. This was a good um, opportunity to combine um, what we thought was a useful resource for the wider community, uh, but also to raise um, awareness of um, the work that we do. Not so much out of the idea of being involved in the MOOC itself, um, as what we were um, involved in just um, at a curricular level within our own program. Um, so I've been doing quite a lot of work with our own students in um, audio engineering techniques and particularly in critical listening or technical listening. Um, and I suppose the opportunity then came along for um, uh, us to make proposals that might be suitable for um, development uh, into the context of a MOOC. Um, and I saw, I suppose, an opportunity for some of the work we were doing, particularly in the area of critical listening and technical listening, to lend itself quite well to the um, uh, the MOOC environment and particularly the assessment methods that um, are employed there. Um, and I suppose what attracted me was the opportunity to to be involved on a larger scale, but also then to spend a concentrated amount of time building up a resource, building up a repository um, that would have uh, benefits, obviously, within the context of the MOOC, but that I could also bring back um, into into the day-to-day -day curriculum. Um, and that's been what's happened. Um, so uh, I've gone from using a, a relatively small repository of examples to 
reacquiring, in a sense, the the MOOC resources and then re-embedding those into the uh, into the undergraduate curriculum here at Queens. And um, so that, I think that, that was uh, the, the primary incentive for me uh, as a, a way of extending and developing my own teaching resource. Um, I think a side benefit for me has been some of the some of the additional materials, not so much the listening materials, but some of the illustrative materials, because um, in developing the MOOC, we brought in uh, video uh, professionals, we brought in some uh, animation artists, and quite a lot of the concepts that I would be teaching were then uh, visualized um, um, uh, through animation and through um, uh, video examples. So again, that was an, an additional resource that um, I've been able to um, to reapply and to re uh, integrate into the into the undergrad curriculum. I think when we looked at the overall development, um, we looked at various examples of um, other MOOCs that dealt with areas of music and areas of technology, and particularly that intersection. Um, and I think this is, it's fair to say this is common across a lot of the implementations of MOOCs across many disciplines. Um, the primary methods of, I suppose, assessing um, the learner's progress through the MOOC are through a combination of um, multiple choice style assessments um, and also uh, peer review. Um, within the, the community of learners that, uh, that are enrolled on the MOOC. Something we felt quite strongly from the outset was that um, the multiple choice style assessments, um, while they may be limited in some areas and some disciplines, they were actually particularly well suited to identification of fixed parameters in music, fixed parameters in audio, and in, particularly, uh, for, in particular for identifying changes to audio that might take place in the studio. So typically what we do is we present uh, the user with a reference stimulus, um, and then we'd modify the reference in some way, and then we'd uh, provide um, the learner with a list of possible um, ways in which the uh, original reference had been modified, and um, the task was usually to identify what the specific change was, what the spe uh, specific parameter change was. So the environment lent itself quite well to um, meaningful assessments, but also incremental um, assessments um, over a period of time. This practical challenge that we faced um, was uh, developing uh, the content and in particular the method of assessment um, through um, the banks of um, practice listening exercises and um, developing that resource within um, the confines of the platform that we were using to, to host uh, the MOOC. For the second um, implementation of the MOOC, um, uh, our partners were very um, accommodating and proactive in looking at ways of um, extending um, the platform. Um, we looked at ways of linking into external sites and um, uh, developing um, additional code to enable us to create um, the repository of listening banks that were truly randomized and that provided a compact um, and a transparent um, uh, way of navigating the practice sets for the, for the learner.